Well, welcome to Lifeblood. This is George G. And the time is right. Welcome to today's guest, a strong and powerful Dr. Chris Verbuch. Chris, are you ready to do this? Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So thank you for having me on your podcast. Excited to have you on. Dr. Chris is the co-founder of Novus. They're an organization developing science-based nutraceuticals to slow down aging. He's a researcher and the author of The Longevity Code, Secrets for Living Well for Longer from the Front Lines of Science. Dr. Chris, tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work and why you do what you do. Yeah, well, since a young age, I've been fascinated by why we age and uh, essentially have to die. So uh, uh, the, the reason why we die is, of course, the aging process. And um, as a medical doctor, I was also interested in uh, yeah, what's the best way to keep people healthy for the longest time possible. And uh, I quickly realized that the best way to achieve that is by going at the root cause of most diseases that people sooner or later will get like heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, osteoporosis, and so on, and uh, going at the root cause of those diseases, which is aging itself. So since a young age, I've been uh, yeah, fascinated by the big questions in life. Uh, uh, what is life? Um, why do we have to die? Uh, where did the universe come from? Is there a boundary at the universe? So I've read a lot about science since a very young age. I've uh, read book actually when I was 16 years old um, and so I've always been fascinated by by these questions so and I think the reason why we age and have to die is one of the biggest questions we can ask ourselves uh, why does aging exist it's actually very weird that it nature and biologists have been thinking for uh, yeah, 150 years or longer about because uh, if you think about it, aging is a bit weird. Uh, it's better to have organisms that can live uh, for a very, very long time so that they can reproduce longer than uh, having organisms that wear out sometimes very quickly, uh, like mice can age in, in two years and uh, humans, it's about 80 years. And for some other species, it's 200 years. But uh, it's very weird that actually aging exists. So um, been, I've been fascinated about those questions since a young age and also about health. As like I said, the best way to keep people healthy is by addressing aging itself. So uh, uh, these are some of the reasons why I'm, I'm so fascinated uh, by aging and, and science in general. I appreciate that. How do you think about aging? Is it something that we accept and we try to live with? Is it a problem that you're trying to solve? Is it possible to live forever? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, we do see in nature there are organisms that don't really seem to age. It's called negligence, uh, negligible senescence. Um, we even see some species that uh, yeah, seem to age backwards. So actually they, they become younger, uh, like Turritopsis dorni. It's a specific jellyfish. And uh, when it's stressed, it can uh, become younger again, which is very interesting because if we get stressed, we age faster and we get gray hair and whatever. But these organisms, uh, if they're stressed, they can uh, revert to a younger state. Um, and there are also species that do age, but that live much, much longer than us. Uh, there are like specific sharks that can live up to 400, 500 years. Uh, there are whales like bowhead whales that can live at least for two centuries. And what's very interesting is that these long-lived species, they don't get cancer or heart disease or Alzheimer's disease when they are 80 years old or 90 years old like we do. They get all these aging-related diseases much, much later when they are 200 years old or 300 years old. Um, so this shows that if you postpone aging and extend lifespan, you also tremendously reduce the risk of aging-related diseases. And that's something I've uh, been very interested in. Um, to answer your question, can we postpone aging? Um, well, if we see in the, to the, to, uh, to, uh, into the, if we look into the research that has been conducted in the last few years, we have seen interesting paradigm shifts actually, uh, demonstrating that it's possible to not just slow down, but even reverse, uh, partially reverse. Um, so that mean, it means uh, a lot of studies have uh, appeared recently. You can have old organisms and you can make them younger again. Uh, so, for example, old mice with gray fur and bald spots. Um, they, after a treatment like epigenetic reprogramming, uh, these old mice, they uh, look young again. So the gray fur is shiny black again. The bald spots in, uh, have disappeared. Uh, their osteoporosis is much better. Their organs can regenerate much better. Uh, they are cognitively much stronger and, uh, and can perform much better. Um, so these 
things show that it's possible to partial reverse aging. And we see a uh, huge influx uh, of, of uh, interest and investment in this area, actually. So recently, the Altos is a company that received $3 billion in funding to address aging and partial reverse aging through epigenetic reprogramming. Uh, Google created a sister company. It's called Alphabet uh, a few years ago. Uh, sorry, um, a sister company called Calico uh, a few years ago. So Alphabet created that company. Um, uh, to, they have billions in funding also to address aging. Um, so, yeah, it's no longer science fiction. Actually, we see more and more companies uh, trying to look into the question, how can we not just slow down, but actually reverse aging? If that would be possible, and I think it's likely, given the research and, and the data we have seen, then it's, it's likely we go to a future where people live much longer, like become 150, 200 years old, while still looking young. Uh, so the whole goal is not to just live much longer and be much healthier at the same time, which is very important, but uh, also uh, yeah, uh, to, to look young. Uh, so the goal would be to become 150 or 200 years old and still look uh, as if you're 30 years old. Fascinating. So... I'm excited to learn about the environmental effects, the food, our lifestyles. Is there a psychological part to it? Yes, definitely. There are many ways uh, to live longer. Um, and uh, psychology is, is, an, is an important aspect, of course. Uh, we see often if you have a more optimistic mindset and uh, look at, at the bright side, uh, yeah, that, that's all also correlated with longer lifespan. Uh, so uh, interestingly, if you look at interviews with centenarians, uh, these are people uh, who are at least 100 years old, what often is very striking is that they have a very positive pre, uh, predisposition. Uh, so uh, they can tell about the whole things they experienced during the Second World War and, and uh, talk about a lot of terrible setbacks in their life. Like immediately after that, they, 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 yeah, they, are, they still look, try to look at it at the back. Always see a silver lining. And it's, that's very striking. Yeah? So that, that these people have a very positive mindset. And even if they experience hardship, they really try to make the best of it. And, and also they often have a little bit of humor. They don't take themselves and everything too seriously. I think that's also very healthy and goes a long way. Um, so uh, psychology is definitely very important. Also stress reduction. We do see in a lot of studies that stress accelerates aging. Um, if you put mice in a conditions where they are stressed, they get cancer much faster, they get met metabolic dysregulation, and, and uh, they have all Alzheimer's uh, or cognitive decline much faster and so on. Um, so stress reduction, positive thinking, uh, happiness uh, are very important. Sleep, uh, which is also a bit a, a part of psychology. If you, if you don't sleep well, you feel grumpy the next day. And like I am today, I have, I'm still jet lagged. I just, I'm just back from the US. Uh, but um, yeah, it, it sleep is also very important uh, for, for uh, longevity. Uh, but of course, there are many other important aspects, nutrition, exercise, and so on. And if, if you would ask me to pick the most important one, uh, it would be without a doubt nutrition. And uh, nutrition is probably the strongest uh, uh, let's say factor that we uh, can impact to for longevity. Uh, and then on, on the second place, you have exercise, psychology, sleep, uh, optimization, and so on. Nice. I appreciate that. So as I, it, there's so much information out there, Chris, obviously, which you're aware of, and it's hard for, for folks who are not diving into this or working in the field full time to really understand. But has has the food that we ate eat has it become less nutritious and has that increased the need to supplement yes uh definitely so we've seen a lot of studies that the way we conduct agriculture that the nutrient density of a lot of foods has declined considerably so a lot of foods contain less vitamin e less uh, copper less zinc less selenium and so on it also depends the area where you live so like in some areas there is less selenium in, in the soil and so on. But in general, uh, we definitely see a significant reduction of a lot of uh, vitamins and minerals in the vegetables and uh, legumes and fruits and, and other foods uh, we cultivate. Uh, one of the reasons is because we use the soil a lot. So we, we grow many times 
uh, per year or uh, we recycle crop load a lot so the the, the soil gets exhausted um, and uh, yeah also uh, some foods are genetically modified so to grow faster and uh, to yield more return but that's sometimes at the expense of uh, vital micronutrients and so on um, so this, this is uh, definitely a, a problem uh, however, a lot of people uh, worry about yeah uh, about these things, but um, they they ignore the most important aspects of healthy nutrition, and uh, that's just trying to eat less uh, less meat, and if you do eat meat, uh, less red meat and more white meat, and uh, less fatty fish. So a lot of people are deficient in fatty fish and omega three fatty acids, um, um, but a lot of people don't even eat a lot of vegetables um, and and legumes and mushrooms and so on. So they worry about yeah should my food be biological and does it contain enough vitamins and so on uh, but yeah they they just don't eat like four times per week fatty fish as they ideally should do uh, they don't eat uh, yeah mainly vegetables instead of potatoes pasta and rice um, they don't eat a lot of uh, yeah let's say white meat instead of red meat um, so I think those things are most important to address and then, and then, of course, you can think, yeah, should I buy more biologically grown food or organic grown food and, and so on. But um, yeah, even getting the basics right, uh, like consuming more healthy fats, uh, more, um, uh, let's say, healthy carbs and more healthy sources of protein. And uh, that's also something a lot of people uh, are not doing yet. Um, so, yeah, in my opinion, that's, that's the first thing we have to look. And then, of course, uh, yeah, making sure that our, our, our food contains uh, enough uh, micronutrients and so on. But I must say the studies conducted in humans where we see if people eat more fatty fish or eat more vegetables, they have much less reduced risk of Alzheimer's disease or heart disease. That's done with the current foods. Right? So the current foods that are depleted in nutrients, but nonetheless, we do see if you eat a lot of vegetables or fatty fish or white meat, uh, despite these foods having less nutrients, we do see a significant decline in aging related disease and, and the risk of, of getting those. Nice. What are you uh, most excited about or most intrigued by in, in, in your research? Yeah, well, I, I'm intrigued by a lot of things. So I will answer this in two ways. First, things I, I find fascinating about biotechnology to live longer, and then about uh, things about lifestyle to live longer. Um, so I think in the biotechnological field, um, the most fascinating thing is something I, I already alluded to in, in this uh, interview. Um, it's the, uh, the, the notion that it's possible to partially reverse aging. Um, that's mainly done through epigenetic reprogramming. So we have seen that if you expose mice um, to three Yamanaka factors, so these are three proteins that uh, if you upregulate those proteins in cells uh, in a cyclical way, um, that these cells get rejuvenated and uh, that the mice also get rejuvenated. Uh, so uh, they live longer and they have much better regeneration again of their tissues and, uh, and they, they improve in all kinds of uh, biomarkers uh, like cognition and activity and, and so on. So, so that's a great uh, finding that aging is not a one-way uh, street or one-way direction. Uh, what we see in these studies is that it's, uh, that aging is a plastic process and that the information to stay young or to be young again is still there in our, in our cells, only it needs to be reactivated. And uh, this reactivation can happen in multiple ways through epigenetic reprogramming via Yamanaka factors, as I mentioned, but also, for example, by exposing uh, old mice to a younger environment again, I, I mean a cellular environment. So uh, there are, have been uh, done studies where if you expose old mice to young blood, so you give them young blood, that these old mice rejuvenate and that their organs can regenerate better and so on. Um, we even see that if you just replace a part of, uh, of the old blood in mice, uh, but, uh, with um, just plasma and uh, uh, some albumin that, uh, yeah, these old mice uh, rejuvenate also somewhat. Um, and uh, recently we also see in human trials that if you uh, replenish a part of, of old blood in, in old people, um, you can significantly decline um, the, uh, the rate of cognitive uh, uh, impairment in, in uh, people at high risk for Alzheimer's disease. So these studies um, are very interesting and they show that aging is something plastic and that, that it's partially reversible. And uh, we will likely go towards a future where these developments 
will uh, come into uh, or trans translate into real treatments um, to rejuvenate us. So that's great. Um, I think a second aspect uh, I'm very excited about uh, is more lifestyle related. Is it's the fact that we now have so much knowledge and insight and, and scientific data uh, to much better assess what's the best diet and what are the best uh, supplements and so on to take for longevity. Um, I think nonetheless, the, despite all this data available, there are still a lot of misunderstandings. So there are hundreds of different uh, diets you can follow. Uh, a lot of diets are actually unhealthy and ac accelerate aging uh, in, the, in the long term. In the short term, most diets do work. Uh, you lose weight, you improve insulin levels, and um, you improve cholesterol and so on. But uh, in the long term, a lot of these diets are not uh, healthy, actually. But um, like I said, we have a lot of insights now. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think uh, the power of nutrition, uh, currently the best technology we have to live longer is nutrition. Uh, it's in the diet. And uh, through following a healthy longevity diet um, and fasting now and then and taking the right supplements, uh, we can uh, significantly slow down aging. And that's great because it helps us to achieve longevity escape velocity, which means we need to stay, try to stay alive as long as possible so we can profit from these new biotechnologies that will come uh, about in the next uh, decades. So, um, so yeah, I think uh, these lifestyle interventions are, are very important and even more than ever. It's got to hold on, Dr. Chris. Yes, yes. <laughs> nice. Fascinating. Fascinating. How much sleep do you get or, or how, how much sleep do you endeavor to get? Yeah, well, I, I try to strive to eight hours of sleep. Uh, I find sleep very important, of course. Uh, we've seen a lot of studies. If people are sleep deprived, their immune system declines with 50% even. Um, they, they, have, they have a high risk of getting Alzheimer's disease, uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, being overweight. Um, so sleep is very important. Even when you sleep, you have like this uh, lymphatic system, which flushes out uh, the proteins that accumulate during the day in our brain and outside our brain cells. Um, and uh, yeah, you have this uh, uh, creation of all kinds of reparative factors uh, or production of all kinds of reparative factors, including melatonin, which also extends lifespan, by the way, um, uh, to, yeah, to repair in, uh, your body. So sleep is tremendously important. So like I said, I, I strive for eight hours. Most people um, are okay with seven to nine hours of sleep. Uh, so, uh, but uh, yeah, some people sleeping less than seven hours, it's, it's perhaps not healthy. Uh, and there are all kinds of ways to improve your sleep. Actually, on our website, uh, on novoslabs.com, uh, that website wants to be, by the way, a platform for longevity uh, where you can find all kinds uh, of uh, information to live longer. But on that website, we have a whole section with more than 50 tips to sleep better. And this, uh, these are also a lot of things I do um, to, to improve my sleep, uh, like uh, wearing uh, blue light blocking glasses in the evening. Um, so you, when you put on those glasses, you block the blue light which otherwise would suppress melatonin production. And really after a half an hour of wearing these glasses, I really start to feel tired. And it works much better than a blue light filter on your smartphone or computer screen because the bl these blue light blocking glasses block away the blue light uh, entirely also from lamps and, and not just from your screens. Um, there are all, also all kinds of supplements to improve sleep and that have been associated also with longer lifespan like glycine, um, which we actually also use uh, in, in some of our supplements. Uh, melatonin. Uh, melatonin is a bit complicated uh, discussion. Uh, uh, ideally, you take a low dose melatonin and extended release, not a fast release. Uh, the melatonin you can buy in, in stores is often way too high dose. So you get a very high melatonin peak in the blood, which goes down also very quickly, which is also not good for, for actually for a long term sleep. Um, so what I would advise is take maximum one milligram of melatonin and extended release. But anyway, and there are many other interesting substances that improve sleep like magnesium and calcium and so on. Um, and, uh, and there are also all kinds of interesting sleep devices that can also help you uh, to calm uh, or, and to fall asleep. So there, um, there are definitely many ways uh, to improve uh, your sleep, uh, which is, of course, a very important component of, of, a, of a healthy long life. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, Dr. Chris, thank you so much for coming on. Where can people learn more about you? How can they engage with you? Yeah, well, uh, the... They can add, they can find me on Instagram. So it's Christopher Burke there. Um, I also have a website, ChristopherBurke.com. 
Um, and if they want to find more about longevity and health, uh, they can go to novoslabs.com. Uh, that's our website. And like I said, this site wants to be a platform for longevity where you can find uh, yeah, science-based information and uh, insights uh, to live longer, healthier lives. Excellent. Well, if you enjoyed this much as I did, show Dr. Chris your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas. Find Chris on Instagram, and that's K-R-I-S-V-E-R-B-U-R-G-H. And then find Novus Labs at N-O-V-O-S-L-A-B-S dot com and check out all the great resources and all the work that Chris is doing, helping us to uh, live longer and healthy and happier and younger lives. Thanks again, Dr. Chris. My pleasure. Thank you. And until next time, keep fighting a good fight. We are all in this together. <laughs>